Now I'm going to tie one of my favourite river flies or favourite river nymphs. It's uh, as with most of my river flies. In uh, in fairness, that it's a it's a really simple fly to tie and a really simple nymph to tie. Uh, it's another fly that has about three ingredients or four ingredients if you count the uh, count the thread. Um, here I've got a size 16 jig hook uh, and it's got a 3 mil bead. Uh, this one is one of the get slotted. I think it's uh, like an olivey colour, uh, small slot, 3 mil. But you just vary the size of the bead according to the size of the hook. And in fairness, you can use gold, copper, whatever takes your fancy really. Uh, I've got like a primrose thread in a 14-0. Uh, with this, um, with the material I'm using, actually the choice of thread is quite important because the the colour of your underlying thread does show through uh, in terms of light or dark. So if you were to put a very dark base thread down, it would actually uh, affect the overall pattern. So just bear that in mind when you are tying it. With this one, I'm doing a relatively light olive uh, pattern which you'll see in a minute so this actually this this kind of primrosey thread suits it very well so it's going to catch in the thread cut off the excess what you want to do first and foremost is just trap that bead in place to build up a little bit of a, a stop next door to the bead and what you can then do is just take that thread down the body slightly and just build a slight taper up towards the bead just like that and that's perfect for the tail I'm using uh, Coq de Leon uh, this is like a, a yellowy olive version uh, you can just use a standard one again uh, but I do like this yellowy olive uh, version for this don't use too much. I often see people using far too much, um, far too many fibres for the tail. Like five or so is is perfect, especially for a nymph of this size. Uh, and don't be, you know, don't don't take them too short either. Don't be afraid of protruding them a bit longer than you think. Probably the length of the, not far off the length of the the hook. In fairness, and just take that down hold the tail as you're taking it down that'll help you get touching turns but also when you come down to the base here I'm just going to pass that thread underneath once which kicks it up and helps splay those tail fibers and you come back up snip off the excess and then for the body I'm using material uh, many will know it as quill uh, I think it's hens that does like a body quill um, this is actually a, an old material uh, which was used for blobs and stuff I believe um, but there's a few different things on the market that will do this but probably the uh, body quills uh, I think it's by hens is probably the easiest one to uh, to track down that actually comes on a spool which may like make life easier for you uh, with the stuff I'm using I'm taking two strands it's going to marry up the ends and just introduce that towards the thorax and then just keep it tight and just take it take that thread down towards the tail keep this section really thin or really streamlined so what you're doing is just building that taper up as you come up towards the thorax so start thin and just slowly taper up what you want to do then because there's no rib going through this you want to just put a, a bit of super glue on the body which I'll do now just take that thread out of the way just take a bit of super glue on the body and then you're just going to pass this stuff up just take it all the way up to the thorax to begin with then come back down about two thirds of the way and stop and then come back up and what you're doing is you're building that taper up and the, uh, the last time come down about halfway 
then come back into the thorax and that is it. You see really really quick way of making a nice tapered body but a great effect with this body quill. And you'll see as well because we um, did about three layers of the stuff up here compared to one layer down here there's actually a bit of a tapering in the color as well so it gets darker towards the thorax the thorax itself so you just want a few legs in the thorax basically and my usual go-to with most of these patterns is some fox squirrel um, it's like a really buggy uh, hairs here will probably do, 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 give you a similar effect I just like the um, the body fur off the fox squirrel and you can use um, or fox squirrel on itself uh, on its own because we're just using the guard hairs it's quite a difficult thing to dub so you could use um, wax at this point if you want uh, I'm just gonna be lazy and just gonna just roll it let's put a good pinch on like so and that's all you do just bunch it really tight in behind the bead. You don't want it going too far down. Just take the thread wraps over you, over itself each time. And that's it. Stroke all of those fibers back. Get a couple of turns in front. And tie off. Really, really easy fly to dress. You get that uh, body quill in a load of different colours, so that's all you need to do is basically vary the the um, the colour of the quill you're using. Just draw that in tight. And that's the fly done. But yeah, you can vary the the the, the colour that you're using here, uh, and yeah, even the colour of the bead and stuff if you wanted to as well. Really, really simple, uh, simple pattern. Uh, but I carry that usually in a uh, light and a dark olive and honestly between the two uh, I don't go far wrong or I don't need to stray that far from these two patterns uh, you just pick out a few fibers if you want but it's as simple as that so fill your box with a few of those and hopefully you'll find a few fish tight lines